and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and today we are going to talk all about allergies and how they affect us and a holistic way to be able to approach it with my good friend, doctor of chiropractic and functional medicine practitioner, Dr. Jason Pate. Hello, Jason. How are you today? I am well, thanks. How are you? I'm fabulous. You're in New York. Is it getting warm over there yet? Oh, yeah. High 70s today. Nice day. Beautiful. So you're you're a chiropractor, and I've always seen a chiropractor since I was about 11 years old. And there's a different kind of approach to chiropractic care to look at the body. And it's very similar to the holistic approach that I've adopted in my adult life. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, I mean, really holistic, you know, chiropractic really is a holistic uh, practice. So it is really all about understanding how the body can heal itself and how all the systems all work together. Um, very intimately and intricately and in that we can affect um, affecting one area can affect all the areas. And so we look at the body from that whole space, right? And not just be very um, specific and very different in, in module, modulized like a lot of uh, traditional medicine is where, you know, you have the GI doctor and this doctor, and that doctor. And yes, we are spine doctors, but that's our point of entry to the rest of the body. And we really look at the, the whole of the person. Ah, I love that. The point of entry. <laughs> I yeah. love it. So, yeah, because a lot of people think, oh, chiropractors just, you know, they're going to crack my back or they're going to, it's an adjustment, by the way, it's not cracking. And um, so it's really great and refreshing to hear you speak to chiropractic medicine as the holistic approach and to see that that is just the beginning. That's just how you get in. And then we address the body in all different ways. And what I want to talk about next is um, the title of our show is Can You Ditch Your EpiPen? And that can raise a lot of fear in a lot of people and in me even personally, because my daughter has a very, you know, life threatening allergy. And if we didn't have the EpiPen, I've spent many, many nights and days afraid and fearful for her life. So, um, can you have a, can you talk about that? I mean, we aren't going to just going to tell people to go ditch their EpiPen. We're going to have people maybe look at it in a holistic approach. How's it going to affect the body, the mind, the spirit, and, uh, maybe start talking about the physical part of it. I mean, listen, again, like you just said, don't run out, get rid of your EpiPen or get, throw your Benadryl away. Um, you know, at least get some dye free Benadryl, but you know, medicines have their place, right? I mean, I'm a holistic doctor, but I definitely come from, uh, I try to stay as natural as possible, but we understand that those things are helpful in a rescue state. Right. Um, but our goal is to see how can we talk from a, a physical uh, and even a mental emotional aspect of where these things come from and maybe how we can start dealing with them differently and possibly not necessarily have to use those things all the time. Right. Um, so from a physical standpoint, you know, so, you know, some chiropractors just adjust you and that's what they do. And, and I will tell you, I've been, you know, I've been chiropractor for over 25 years and I've had plenty of times I've worked with patients and even just the chiropractic adjustment alone has been helpful for, for things like a seasonal allergy. Um, but, you know, a lot of times we get more into the, with the functional medicine aspect, the holistic uh, medicine piece where we try to heal the body with nutrition and diet and understanding how these processes work. So. You know, there's a, something in our bodies called mast cells, and mast cells create things like histamines and other chemicals. And histamines are the things that, when we get sick, that cause a lot of our symptoms and colds. It also causes a lot of our allergenic responses. You know, when you have, even with uh, asthmas and uh, eczemas and other skin stuff, it's all, a lot of it's histamine driven. So when we are come from a more natural standpoint, we try to lower the histaminic load on the body, if you will. So we use certain supplements that are natural that work with the body to modulate things, not turn them off, um, to help stop the mast cells from you know forming and or lowering the level of the chemicals that come from them. 
to naturally lower histamine levels that don't cause people to be tired and drowsy and have a drug effect um, and just support immune function both from the gut and above. So that's kind of a bigger approach that we take. Are, I have a question. Are the mast cells always there or do you form them and then you get more? Is there, and then you're more like susceptible to allergies? How's that so, work? You know, that's a fair question. So in general, mast cells do, you know, they turn over. I mean, we always have them. We need histamines, right? Histamines are how we actually make our stomach acid. Um, we just, uh, and we need them to actually help our body fight things. We just don't want to, we don't want too much, right? And we don't want them seeing a higher elevated level on a regular basis. And it's not just the mast cells, it's immunoglobulins and everything and other things too, about how our body's immune system is reacting to things uh, when it comes to an allergy, um, as if it was an invading organism and not just something from nature, right? So it's about rebalancing that immune system and getting those levels to be more optimal you know unfortunately we live in a post-covid world now and uh one of the things that we saw with covid was that people wound up having um post-covid elevated levels of mast cells in their bodies and that could last we've seen them elevated for you know months and years even so more people susceptible to more colds and allergies too so it's all about you know trying to refine that balance in the immune system hmm. that's really interesting so um with some things so we've talked about what can cause the histamine response and mm -hmm. the there's some supplements and things what are some uh, so that's where the epipen would come in and maybe diet and i've always heard too because i'm allergic to horses and there was a time i grew up in colorado <laughs> there's plenty of horses there so we're thinking, oh, well, I really wanted to ride horses. I'm always out in the country. And there's shots that you can get, which is like a micro dose of horse histamine. What would that be? Well, <laughs> a micro dose of talking... horse dander, maybe? Right. Well, I think you're probably talking more about homeopathics or homeopathy. Right. So homeopathy is more, you know, the study where like cures like. If a lot makes you sick, a little makes you better. So in homeopathy, you know, when you kind of do is you give a little bit of something that may irritate someone to help them as well. So there's some things we've used, I've used in the past for allergies homeopathically. Um, you know, sometimes even traditional medicine has tried to find a ho almost homeopathic way. You've seen some of these allergists, things like that. They try to desensitize you by giving you a little bit of something over and over again. It can sometimes be effective, but just the delivery of all that I've never been a fan of. Um, to me, it's, it's an immune system that's overreacting to something and we need to correct it. And there may be something just physical, but they're all, or, and chemical, or maybe something more emotional or both. So I, you know, while I'm not the, uh, the emotional practitioner, I work with people in my center that do that work too. And I'll, I'll also integrate that as well, but we'll talk a little more, my own story with some of that later, but, um, you know, really for me, it's about getting that immune system to do a job best. Right. And, if you think about hunter gatherers, um, they didn't run around sneezing all some all spring long, right? Otherwise, you know, they sneak up on a deer and then they go to you know shoot the bow and arrow and they'd sneeze and the deer run away. They'd all starve to death. Um, they were much more in tune with their environment. But we uh, eat things we shouldn't. We change our food sources, all those things, and our immune system changes, and we're more reactive to our environment than we should be. So it's about turning that that down in the body, whether it's nutrition and diet supplements whatever it may be i've even heard and this is you know controversial of <laughs> course is that you could even use urine therapy for <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> it's not traditional and i wouldn't say it's common but there's <laughs> a lot of studies and um if you're you know adventurous and all alone without an epi pen then it might be something that right. you would consider <laughs> i mean listen i guess if there was no i had nothing and i had an anaphylactic reaction where it was so bad that it was either that or die i guess i would maybe try it although i don't want that being my last meal necessarily um <laughs> but again yeah. you know histamines we have to excrete them and in, in, in the complex that we form with them get excreted to the urine so there is some there are some studies out there that you can do things like that and again it's almost uh, somewhat homeopathic i guess um yeah. in the way it works <laughs> Uh, okay okay moving on moving on so yeah. let's look at the mental aspect so <laughs> i always like to bring um 
Louise L. Hayes into the mix because she's been a great teacher in this journey. And what she says about allergies is that one of the probable causes is uh, to ask yourself, who are you allergic to? And also denying your own power. She also offers uh, something that you can say as well to be able to bring yourself out of those patterns. Like, the world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. That's what she offers for allergies. So, you know, when we first started this show, I said, oh, you know, yeah, that's the affirmation. So when we first started the show, that's what I came to is the fear. And I know that I was afraid for my daughter's life when she would have these attacks with tree nuts. But I was also, I'm sure she was afraid and that's what I was responding to as well. So I think mentally, if we can reaffirm that we are safe and the world is friendly and everything, that's that mental aspect, right? That we can also address. Well, it definitely, and having the positive outlook to it, right? If you're, if you're, subconscious believes that anytime I'm exposed to X, Y, Z, I'm going to have an anaphylactic reaction and might die. Well, you know, you might have an anaphylactic, anaphylactic reaction and die regardless, right? right? So, you know, our subconscious and our emotions drive so many things. And uh, there's a technique. One of the few techniques we use here, some of our practitioners do, is something called Psych K. I don't know if you know who Bruce, Bruce Lipton is, but Bruce Lipton is very big in this world of... Uh, you know, uh, subconscious beliefs and all those things, but he's a very big proponent of it. Um, and it's a very simple technique once you, once you mastered it. And basically it's very simply put, it's finding using muscle testing to find negative beliefs in the subconscious and energy work to balance. it. So if we get to a little more of that, the spiritual metaphysical side, um, you know, it's what's holding that thing in. Like I had a 19 year nut allergy, so I couldn't eat hazelnuts, almonds, or cashews without an allergic response. Now, for me, that wasn't anaphylaxis. Um, my ears would get itchy, the back of my throat would get itchy and scratchy, my uvula would swell up, my, my lips would get a little bit irritated and swollen at times. And, you know, I wasn't going to figure out if, you know, wait, you know, keep eating hazelnuts just to make sure I had an anaphylactic reaction one day. But, um, you know, I avoided them, but it's not like I didn't have exposures. A few times a year, I'd always get exposed to something and go, oh, I bet there was almonds in that. And you'd ask, go, oh, yeah. And they're like, well, there's my reason. Um, so the, one of the, when we, we actually host trainings for this technique here. And then the instructor was in town. This is five years ago now. Um, I had her, she did the, some work with me and actually cleared my allergy. It took like 10 minutes. Um, you know, for me, it was something to do with some forgiveness work around my dad. And once we had done that, I said, all right, let's try it. I ate a cashew. Nothing happened. I waited a few more minutes. I'm going to try another cashew. Nothing. I'm like, that's kind of cool. I'm like, I think part of my brain was a little like, you know, skeptical still. So that night I was here doing some paperwork by myself and I was hungry. I went in the back and I'm like, screw it. I ate a handful of hazelnuts. Probably not the smartest move because by myself at 10 o'clock at night and nothing. And it's been five years and still nothing. You know, I, I've had them, I eat them, no problem. And um, just for me, that allergy was gone because something emotional held it in, right? And sometimes with this technique, you not to get too far down the rabbit hole, you, you try to do some detective work to see, like, when did it first start and this and that. And there was nothing really we tied to that moment. So we just did some other work to find it. But, you know, the, the instructor would tell the story about someone she worked on that had seasonal allergies. And it turned out when he was like five years old, they were in, a, in the car, they were in the car and the windows were down. It was, you know, pollen spring and they had a car accident and the trauma of that accident with the pollen exposure kind of linked those two together for him when they cleared that no longer an issue with, you know, pollen. She even tells a story about someone who had banana, like an anaphylactic issue with that banana and they were eating bananas, no problem. So I'm not saying do this and you'll, you can go eat peanuts if you're going to die from a peanut eating, but right. at the very least, if you maybe could take that load down, like after you get an exposure, maybe you don't need it. Anymore. I don't, right. you know, like I'm not saying don't use the I'm saying, one never knows. Things can change. Right. And I mean, and that's also that radical trust, right? I want to hear more about the rabbit hole. Well, how did you find, uh, how did you find your emotion? You said forgiveness issue with your dad. So, you know, she went back and because this technique has different levels to it and there's a health and well-being where they actually 
or trained as an MD out of Sweden that actually trains a specific thing with them. It's all about finding the emotional causes of disease. It's actually really cool. So she was using some of that. And I was like, hey, when, was the fir- when you first had that hazelnut allergy, what happened? And I, I, mean, I, was at a, I was on a blind date eating hazelnuts at a really nice Italian restaurant. And all of a sudden, I'm like, why is it back in my throat, like my usual touching my tongue? Um, you know, and it was like trying to figure out. And she muscle tested. And no, nothing would show up, you know, as the issue. And she goes, okay, is there something around the mother? No, it's something around the father. Yes. And then it was like doing some other detective work there to say, all right, it's about forgiveness work with your dad. And then you do some pieces of, you know, the technique where it tells you how to kind of you know, clear that. And, you know, you do the work, you sit into the energy. And I've, you know, listen, I've been doing this kinds of things with, you know, for a long time. Um, so it's maybe easier for me than someone else, but um, pretty cool. And I've had a lot of patients go through the training or even just get work done with it with some pretty, pretty radical shift for things uh, from a physical standpoint or an emotional standpoint. And just one of those things at the end of the day, what does it mean? Right. It means that you don't realize how much your emotions drive or hold things in for you. I had a real reaction. I had a real physical chemical response to something, but something was causing that subconsciously to be held there. So and for some people that may be more esoteric, I don't think that's necessarily the case for your viewers, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, sometimes it's not the easiest thing to explain to people, but you know, when you come from a more sciencey place and you talk about it as well, people listen a little bit differently when I, when I talk about it in my practice. Right. I mean, I'm big on finding what the emotional cause is for things. And I feel like there's a lot of ways when you clear those emotions, then the rest of your being has that freedom to be able to not be enslaved by those experiences anymore, right? Those those right. occasions, those incidents, the triggers that will just get you and you don't even know. So um, I had a really terrible reaction when I was young to horses and um, the, yeah, my throat, every, I looked really yeah i wasn't even recognizable (laughs) and (laughs) as like a human child and i mean i don't remember anything and i was looking at like huh was i like allergic to somebody was i denying my own power at like seven or six like i don't know you know what i mean i don't think so i think i felt safe and everything so i guess there's something else that i would love to hear more about that therapy because yeah, I mean, listen, there's so many things from a subconscious standpoint right so you know we do hypnosis here we we do the psyche we have other techniques and it comes down to you know our subconscious is recording everything right and our subconscious is telling us stories whether we understand or not and our perspective is always shaped by our experience and vice versa so who knows Right. There could have been one incident that happened that day that triggered something from when you were five that maybe someone had said to you and all of a sudden, boom, and then now it anchored him with this other thing. You know what? That is a really good point, because I there were a lot of traumas in my early childhood and I I didn't feel safe. And this just came up like two weeks ago when I was doing a different therapy that I'll talk about on another show. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it came up and I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel safe at all. And that's interesting. And so it could just have been like that perfect storm is what I call it of when, and dag nabbit horses are supposed to be like the most spiritually in tune animals or something on the planet too. So, <laughs> I always uh, wanted to be able to be with them. <laughs> not really the horse's fault. But, <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, That's why I'm mean, saying, why can't I connect? <laughs> and at the end of the day, the cool thing about the subconscious is you don't have to know critically, consciously. Your subconscious always knows. You just need to train pra- a good practitioner doing certain techniques to get to the root, right? And listen, there are other techniques. I mean, you, we talked earlier about you and I off before the show about NEET, which a lot of times is done by acupuncturist but it's another technique where they try to go after an allergy and make these certain points on the body and they sometimes make it whole stuff and then they basically avoid that allergy for 25 hours and whatever and sometimes it does clear and i've 
I've dealt, I don't do any ET, but I work with some a number of practitioners that do, so I can refer them to. There's, there's a lot of ways to skin the old cat. You know, in my center, I have so many practitioners, I can just send them to whoever I feel might be the best fit. And then for myself, I try to teach them, you know, we'll see how some supplements to support it. And then how can we go after balancing the immune system? So it's kind of our big thing there. Yeah. So uh, let's talk too about, so we've got the NAT, the acupuncture, um, the emotional, the mental, the physical. Is there any particular um, incident that you can talk about that's really influenced you about allergies or something that uh, has really just blown your mind about one of your no names, of course, but one of your clients or friends or family members? Well, like I said, the the thing for me with the nuts was pretty mind blowing. You know, you can do, we do belief work all the time, right? If we're in this world that you and I live in, but, um, you know, I can do, uh, you know, I can do work around a money belief and then, but no one just, you know, backs up a Brinks truck to my door and just dumps cash out. It's not usually how it works. Right. But with the allergy thing, the fact that I, we did this work and I was able to literally just eat that food and not have a problem was pretty mind blowing to me. I think it's, you know, when you can see it like that, and I've had some patients with other physical issues with that too. Um, you know, that's one of those cool things. Um, you know, even earlier on when I, sometimes my seasonal allergies just from, uh, getting an adjustment would get better. You know, I, I need to do some more psyche or something around my seasonal allergies, but for me, it's really, diet and nutrition. If I avoid certain foods and I take my supplements, I don't have allergies or very minimal. You know, I, I have really severe seasonal allergies and I should never keep saying that to myself because it just feeds my subconscious more BS. But um, because I don't eat gluten, dairy, soy, corn, especially this time of year, and I take the supplements that I use, um, I have minimal response. And if I do, it's, it's short-lived and, uh, you know, not like I used to get, you know, so... Right, because there are certain foods that are inflammatory. And if your allergic responses are an inflammatory immunal response, then that would make perfect sense that it's contributing to it. Right. So from a chemical standpoint, inflammation is at the root of all disease, right? Mm -hmm. So the less, the more you lower inflammation in your body, both from your food sources, your uh, you know external toxic levels, you know, make sure your liver's like. There's so many pieces to it. There's never always. There's not always one answer, right? Um, uh, but I think sometimes getting to the emotional root can be a really big one for a lot of people. Uh, faster sometimes if you can get to the cause really quick. But yeah, otherwise lifestyle shift. You know, the getting back to what we are. And what we're supposed to be and away from all those things, you know, think of all the loads of toxic crap that's been loaded into us from day one. Right. Right. Um, On all levels, not just right. what we, what we eat, <laughs> right. but what we ingest in our environment. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh. So, and I mean, and there's like a short term and a long term, right? So the short term would be the EpiPen or the Benadryl, if that's how you choose to go. And then, you know, or the rescue response, right? Right. And then the long term would be, okay, let's take a look at what creates <coughs> inflammation in ours. I have seasonal allergies also. And sometimes I'll just be like, oh, uh oh, I can feel that coming on. And I'll just maybe take a day or two of a quercetin bromelain mix or something like that. And once it gets in my system, I'm like, oh, I feel better. <laughs> and I right. don't have to use it every day or anything. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's when it comes to, again, the EpiPen, Benadryl, to me, those are like worst case scenario, right? And if you're someone who has these life threatening allergies, you know, you can do all this other work around it, but I would still hold on to the EpiPen. Right. right. Because you never know, right? Like you could do the work like I did with Psyche and maybe it is gone but maybe it's not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I would never say, Oh, you, you die if you eat a peanut. So let's do this, this technique and now eat a peanut. Right. right. Uh, um, you know, if someone decided on their own to try that one day, I would tell them don't do it without Benadryl or a freaking every pen around. Cause God forbid you had the response and it didn't clear or whatever, uh, or there's more to it than just the emotional piece. You better have that other thing around. So, right. um, I'm not advocating for those things. Um, 
that's what I'm just saying. Like if, you know, people like, well, I don't want, yeah, I would, again, I tell my patients too, like if you want to use this technique and try to go after a, a specific allergy that you know you're anaphylactic to where you, you could die, I'm not like, oh, we'll do it. Just eat a head, you're fine. Just eat, you know, peanuts. It'll be right. good. Yeah, um, that makes my heart palpitate a little bit. Right, right. There's a level of fear. But then, you know, the hope is that at the very least you can look underneath and say, you know what? I did this technique. Maybe if I got an exposure one day, I may, I may not need the epipen. That doesn't mean you hold out and like, I think I'm going to make it, you know? But right. if you got an exposure and didn't know it and didn't have a response, wouldn't that be cool to find out later? Oh, you know what? There was penis in that. And they're like, oh, crap, I didn't die. You right. know what I mean? And you had the EpiPen got that you needed. Right. So, so um, let's just, it, so you said it was Psych K, P S Y C H K. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the one woman we work with, if you want to check out our website, it's, instead of inter, it's interactivebeliefs.com. So I N N E R beliefs.com, um, activebeliefs.com. Um, so she, we actually host those trainings here uh, a few times a year. So we actually have one coming up in June if anyone wants to travel to or if lives in New York. I don't know where all your people are watching from, but <laughs> you want to come it's in June. Right. Like, we'll do a little uh, side trip to go and You do should. It. <laughs> Absolutely. You should fly all the way from Hawaii. Maybe here. we'll have you in Hawaii and we can host one here in Hawaii yeah, yeah. sometime. I would do that. I'm sure she would do that. Uh, <laughs> Robin, the woman who's our instructor, but uh, Beautiful. yeah, I have to visit one day anyway, but um, probably won't have any allergies either there. Oh, no, there's plenty. We have lots of allergies here. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a real thing. Uh, no, a lot right. of things bloom and blow in the air here. And right. you wouldn't even recognize it until you're like, oh, shucks, that's happening. But thank oh. you so much for coming on today, Jason. My uh, pleasure. Dr. Thank Dave. you so much. Yes, just Appreciate really it. enjoyed having you and all of your wealth of knowledge and wisdom and uh, sharing your personal experiences as well as always a bonus on this show to be able to let people know that they're not alone and pleasure. there are ways to be able to, you know, find holistic approaches to their well-being. So I also want to thank Think Tech Hawaii for providing a place for us to be able to have these conversations and all of our donors and sponsors for helping to keep us on the air. And just remember, you are the answer that you need in order to be able to keep yourself healthy and whole. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.